Welcome. Let's uh, talk right now about the ULES High Court Challenge with Alan Miller. He's co-founder of the Together Declaration, one of the campaigners against the expansion of the ultra-low emission zone in London, all the way out to the M25, forcing people with well, older cars, probably because they can't afford to buy a newer car like many people, being forced to pay £12.50 just to drive even just one road away from their own home, nowhere near the centre of London. Good morning to you, Alan. Good morning, Julia. Um, I know you're going to want to, before we talk about you, Liz, though, have a quick word on our, our conversations about Nigel Farage versus Coots and uh, Alexandra Tolstoy and many, many other very ordinary people on ordinary incomes who, 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 who are finding their accounts being closed. Because you guys have been warning about you know, the move to a central bank digital currency as, as a part of the ways that people can be controlled. And this is, this is one of the risks. It's absolutely uh, shocking. You know, along with the spy units, I think this is one of the most chilling, concerning uh, stories that we've seen. And uh, you mentioned already that people like the Free Speech Union, us for them, yeah. the women campaigners for the children, have all had these things happen. Um, but now we're seeing a wrath of them. Uh, and we've just seen another set of parents being turned down by the Metro Bank for yeah. their views on gender you know their particular views on uh, on gender as it happens there is legislation already at the bank of england i think it's 20 in the bank of england act 20 c to not to sound too technical where people can actually challenge this uh, and there can be compensation but andrew griffiths we're all uh, arguing that this should be challenged that it's great that we're seeing the chancellors making some noises but the treasury uh, needs to make sure this is rectified actually it looks like what's happening is you've got activists and campaigners like they've done in the academy at universities and in the workplace in lots of institutions that are targeting individuals yep. Absolutely. Uh, and you know these politically exposed people is meant for something very different we need to get this rectified because you know before you even get to central bank digital currency people can just get closed yeah. down it's absolutely yeah. but by the way we've got the government jeremy hunt and others saying oh this is all terrible this is all terrible something must be done bearing in mind i don't remember them ever speaking out when uh, justin trudeau in canada was closing down the accounts of businesses and people who'd even given a 20 dollar donation to the canadian truckers and their anti-vaccine passport uh, uh, protest i don't remember any morning government i don't remember certainly Jeremy Hunt having any issue with that that's absolutely right and in, indeed and we've just seen as well today again the headlines that uh, the current American administration was helping suffocate those that were raising questions and were critical yep. about all sorts of things around lockdowns and vaccines. So, um, basically, tell it, basically um, court case involving basically them not being banned from talking to social media companies because they were basically saying, can you shut these people down because they're criticising us, which is just extraordinary democracy. And yet nothing's extraordinary anymore. Let's talk, though, about what we invited you on for, Alan Miller. Um, the ULES High Court Challenge yesterday, um, we had five Conservative-led councils in the outskirts of London going to the High Court to argue that the Mayor of London, Labour Mayor Sadiq Khan, doesn't have the legal power to expand the city's ultra-low emission zone or ULES. Tell us about this case. Yeah, so there's four key areas where they're arguing this on the legal basis around the consultation process that it should have been a new process because it was qual quantitatively and qualitatively different and uh, larger than the uh, existing uh, zone. Um, so. Uh, in many ways, it, it's one of those things where it looks like it has a strong chance of potentially winning, but that would, could then go to appeal. Uh, and it's good that these five boroughs have done that. They obviously feel that they've got a legal case and it's their constituents' money. We should all yeah. remember that in the same way that Sadiq Khan's using London as money as well to, yeah. to, to, to go back and exactly. challenge. Um, but I think also one of the frustrations is that the public can end up feel, feeling like we're somewhat sidelined within it all, waiting for a judge, the great and the good, to decide on it either way. And it could be that it, it might still be that uh, he, Sadiq Khan does win this on a legal technicality with his team, but it doesn't really expose the political or the moral questions around it. And that's something that happens yeah. in the public domain with, with the public. So it will be decided, it's another couple of days, but they're saying, you know, it will wrap up early today. And it, it, it will be by around the, in a couple of weeks time, by around the 20th or 21st of July, we should know. Uh, which is just under five weeks before the uh, date for the expansion is due. Now, all sorts of things could happen, yeah. but it does, if if it wins, if it is successful and, and says that Sadiq Khan has stopped, he would then have to go and do a new consultation. And obviously, we've got a general election forthcoming, a new mayoral election forthcoming. So it raises a lot of questions. But he has posited the idea of all sorts of other things like 
pay per mile road yeah. charges. Oh, I mean, they're, they're, whatever they do, they're going to want money. But this is the key thing, as lots of people pointing out. And they're not worried about emissions because if they were, then you say, oh, well, you wouldn't be allowed to drive your car at all. But if you pay £12.50 a day, you can. So they're really not that bothered about emissions. This is about raising money for a cash-strapped yeah. uh, transport for London, isn't it? But the key thing here is that we're not talking about people driving into the heart of central London, you know, smog and all of that. We're talking about people driving perhaps two or three roads away, people having a hospital appointment that's just inside the M25 when they live just outside the M25. It's a huge, huge, huge area. And also, another really, really basic point, we're told that oh, London's got the most terrible air, it's so dirty, we need to improve it. I, I was watching some people you know, talk about this uh, on, on, on TV yesterday. Um, the air quality in London, as in every other city and town in this country, has massively, massively improved over the decades. It's, I mean, the graph is basically like a massive, long, downward shoot and no, it's not because of the, the tiny little Ulez zone that originally started in the city of London. It was long before that. That's barely made any difference at all. The air is cleaner now than it ever was in this century, cleaner than it was before the Industrial Revolution. But we're told, oh, no, 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 we live in terrible, terrible pollution. I mean, it's just a load of abject nonsense. That's exactly the right point. So it's much better than it's ever been before. And... Uh, if Sadiq Khan was really honest, what he would do is he would address, if he was concerned about extending lives even further and making them better, he would do what everyone knows is the thing that helps that, which is improve housing stock, have better housing provision, and ensure that the conditions for productivity, wealth creation, and growth and development are all there. Uh, service provision. And he, like many local authorities, and it has to be said, like the government as well, have been very focused on restrictions and limits yeah. and suffocations rather than doing that, doing what their job is, which is not to tell pork pies, not to lie about things, about 4,000 deaths, which is completely made up. Oh, well, yeah, this idea that 4,000 people die as a result of uh, of the uh, of, of pollution. Again, it's, it's equivalent lives lost over a year of all the people who live in the city. And we're talking about, basically, people living maybe a week or two less their entire lives because they've not because there's a diesel you know van nearby but because we have pollution and that pollution would exist i believe i believe sort of four out of seven it would exist um even if we didn't have a single electric pylon or, or or a car but but it exists because we have things like fridges and we have you know supermarkets and and we build houses and things it's this stuff is just spouted at by politicians and on the media again and again and it is simply it is it is mostly a lie at the very best you can say it is it is deliberately misleading to make these claims and people are genuinely wandering around thinking the air in this capital city is dirtiest it's ever been and it's all down to cars and those things are both patently provably factually objectively untrue yeah and if, if people were concerned anywhere and without catastrophizing and dramatizing things, it's actually on the underground where particles are more of a problem. Yeah. And Sadiq Khan has got uh, allegedly control over transport for London, and that should be addressed, right? Yeah. That is one area where people... He, he could actually do something about it. Well, we'll have to leave it there, but fantastic to talk to you, as always, uh, uh, Alan Miller. Again, if you're sitting there going, oh, it's just London, talking about London again, remember, if it happens in London, it'll happen in your town or city soon. I promise you, there's always a way to make a fast buck off the, uh, off the, the drivers, always.